What up YouTube, it's your boy Professor Sticks and I'm back again with another Call of Duty Warzone video. Today we're going to be comparing the Farah and the XM4. We'll be comparing the stats, looking at the recoil pattern, and I will be sharing with you the best attachments. We're going to find out, can the XM4 replace the Farah? If this is your first time here, make sure you hit that subscribe button. I make Warzone tips and tricks videos and I compare the best weapons in Warzone so you can rise to the top. Let's get into it. Now, when we're looking at the weapon stats, the Farah has an ADS speed of 296 milliseconds, and the XM4 has an ADS speed of 248 milliseconds. The movement speed for the Farah is 4.67 meters per second, and the XM4 has a movement speed of 4.62 meters per second. The reload speed comes in at 3.17 seconds for the Farah, and the XM4 has a reload speed of 2.24 seconds. The rate of fire for the Farah is 790 rounds per minute, and the XM4 has a rate of fire of 727 rounds per minute. And so you can see here that the XM4 does have a slight speed advantage when it comes to the ADS and the reload speed, but the rate of fire for the Farah does come ahead of the XM4, giving it a pretty effective TTK when we start looking at the damage profile. So if we look at the Farah, it does 46 damage to the head, which takes six shots to down a fully armored opponent. The XM4 does 48 damage to the head, which also takes six shots to down a fully armored opponent. The Farah does 31 damage to the chest, which means it takes nine shots to down a fully armored opponent. And the XM4 does 32 damage to the chest, which means it takes eight shots to down a fully armored opponent. It's important to keep in mind that both of these weapons have a damage fall off. The Farah has a damage fall off at 27 meters and the XM4 has a damage fall off at 22 meters. Let's take a look at the time to kill. Now, if you're hitting all of your headshots, the Farah will down a fully armored opponent in 380 milliseconds compared to the XM4, which will down a fully armored opponent if you're hitting all of your headshots in 413 milliseconds. The time to kill if you're hitting all of your chest shots for the Farah is 608 milliseconds, but the XM4 has a time to kill if you're hitting all of your chest shots in 578 milliseconds, which means it's a little bit more forgiving if you're not hitting those headshots. However, with the Farah, if you hit one or two headshots, you will reduce your time to kill to 532 milliseconds, which is very, very impressive. And if you hit three headshots, it'll be a seven shot to kill, bringing your time to kill to 456 milliseconds. And that's why the Farah is really good right now and it rose above the FFAR. With the XM4, if you hit one headshot, you are not going to reduce your time to kill. But if you hit two or three headshots, you will reduce your time to kill to 495 milliseconds. So in my opinion right here, the Farah is better than the XM4, but we know that the Farah is going to receive a nerf soon. So the XM4 might slide into the top, we'll see. Let's take a look at the recoil pattern. All right, so taking a look at the recoil pattern, we have the Farah on the left and the XM4 on the right. With the Farah, it is pretty vertical. It does veer off to the left, but pretty easy recoil pattern to control since they adjusted the recoil pattern for the Farah. The XM4, again, simple recoil pattern to control. It is vertical veering off into the right. It does have more vertical recoil than the Farah, but both of these are going to be very easy weapons to control, especially since we're going to be using them at close range. All right, so let's talk about the situational use. The Farah and the XM4 are really identical when it comes to their situational use. They both excel at that short to mid range gunfight. The strafe speed on the XM4 is absolutely insane. And it's the same thing for the Farah. They're very mobile ARs. And that's why a lot of people are using them as SMGs or secondaries to a sniper rifle or a weapon like the AMAX. Now, I like the XM4's mobility a little bit better than the Farah. It's a little bit easier to move around with the XM4. But the far does pack a punch and that time to kill is really impressive when you start hitting those headshots. I think the far is a little bit more accurate than the XM4, so you can definitely use it for those mid range gunfights as well. Let's take a look at the best attachments. All right, so for the far, you're going to want to go with the Gru suppressor. You're going to want to go with the 18.7 inch Spetsnaz RPK barrel. This is equivalent to the task force barrel. That's going to give you that strafe speed, the bullet velocity and the effective damage range. Not to worry about the cons on the vertical and horizontal recoil. The recoil is easy to control as we saw earlier. And on top of that, you're using this for close range. You're gonna wanna go with the 50 round magazine, the Spetsnaz field grip, which is gonna give you the ADS speed. It's gonna hit your sprint to fire, but not to worry because you're gonna get that back when you use the KGP skeletal stock. All right, guys, 
This is the build for the far. Let me show you the XM4. Now, the XM4 is a little bit different. You're going to go with the agency suppressor, the 13.5 inch task force, but we're going to put on the Tiger Team Spotlight laser. I don't know how a laser increases your movement speed and increases your aim walking movement speed, but somehow this does that. The flashlight will be visible to enemies, but with this insane strafe speed, honestly, it's going to be hard for them to hit you anyways. Hopefully that light blinds them. <laughs> the 60 round magazine and then you're going to want to go with the raider stock which is going to give you additional aim down sight firing move speed aim walking move speed and sprint to fire that's what makes the xm4's movement and mobility just absolutely insane plus it's already fast aim down sight speed all right so here are my final thoughts i'm definitely going to take the xm4 over the far in my personal opinion just because I like the movement of the XM4. It's really, really fast. That ADS speed is really, really quick, especially when you start putting on the right attachments. If you build the XM4 purely for mobility, the strafe speed is absolutely insane. It makes bunny hopping so fun to do. I really like the XM4 over the Farah, and since the Farah is going to receive that nerf, I'm preparing to start using the XM4, but we'll see. They're talking about nerfing some of the movement speed for the Cold War ARs. We might have to switch back to maybe an SMG or God forbid, a shotgun meta. I hope not. Well, that's it for me, guys. Make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can find your way back for more Call of Duty content. I hope you guys are enjoying the content. Really appreciate all the support on the channel as we work our way up to 5,000 subscribers. As always, make sure you drop into the war zone and frag out. Peace.